welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, I've been a big fan of the show for a long time. Let's just talk about you first, so that if the audience does not know, growing up in South Africa. Yeah. You know, yeah. And why, how, how did you end up in Canada? Um, well, um, I guess growing up in South Africa, I, I was actually it was very t uh, technology oriented, and I, I taught myself how to program computers mostly because I wanted to program games. Right. Um, and I, when, when I was about twelve, I, I programmed, sold my first game, and. Whenever I'd read about technology um, and, and great innovation, it's, it, it was coming from from the United States, and um, so I, it was. You know, that's where I wanted to be. And I tried to convince my parents to move uh, move there, and uh, neither of them would. They, they would have watched. I tried to my mother. I tried mm -hmm. to find, neither would, would do it. Le my mother later moved uh, back to, to initially Canada and then and then the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I was 17, uh, as soon as I got my Canadian passport, um, three weeks later I was in Canada. So here you are, and you, and you come to Canada and make it to the United States, and then you and, and several other guys come together and create PayPal. Right. And you sell it to eBay for one point, whatever it was, $5 billion. Yeah. So after PayPal, um, uh, that, that gave me you know, a fair bit of capital. Um, and uh, uh, there, there, were, there were three areas. When I was in college, there were three areas that I thought would most affect the future of humanity. Um, and, and those were the internet, uh, the transition to a sustainable energy and transportation uh, sector, and the third was space exploration, in particular the extension of life to multiple planets. Um, now I didn't ever expect to be involved in the third one, but I, but I just that seemed to me that's something that would be very important for the future. Right. Um, and w with the, the the capital that I got from the sale of PayPal, um, I was able to go into both those those areas. Um, and uh, and so hen hence uh, uh, SpaceX and and in, in the space and, and then in in the sustainable energy and transportation, you've got uh, Solar City and, and, and Tesla. Let me talk about space exploration just for a moment. How is it going in terms of uh, creating the systems that will engage us in space exploration, not just for governments and not just for NASA, but for private citizens as well? Well, y you have to divide the efforts that are going on into what, what is an, an orbit class effort versus a suborbital right. class effort. And there's really a very big difference. But the general public doesn't understand the difference between getting to space and getting to, getting to orbit. And, and so it's, it's important to make that distinction. Um, to, to do a suborbital flight, you need a terminal velocity of around Mach 3. Right. Uh, to, do, to get to orbit, you need a terminal velocity of, of Mach 25. It's, it's a huge, huge difference. Um, and because the energy required to do that scales with the square of the velocity. So um, suborbital may be nine units of energy. Uh, orbit is 625 units of energy. So uh, it's only about one and a half percent uh, of the energy of orbit is required to get to suborbit. So, so there, there's, there are a number of efforts in the suborbital category that certainly could grow one day right. to, to, to orbital. Um, there's Jeff Bezos right. uh, has, has an effort. Um, and uh, I, I know that that's something that, that's pretty Is important. Branson involved in this yeah, or not? Yeah, Branson, absolutely. Right. Um, and, uh, not, not so much directly from the technology standpoint, but from uh, the, he's, he's funding that development at scaled composites in, in, in California. And, and what are you doing? So we're in the, we're in the, in the, in the orbit class. Um, and and that's, it's, it's a lot more capital, and, uh, and, and, and that's really where you're sort of pushing the, the, the ragged edge of, of what's, what's physically possible. Um, and uh, last year we got to orbit uh, with, with, for the first time with, with our rocket, um, and um, uh, th that was certainly a, a huge so relief and a milestone. <laughs> yeah, and so what's the next step? Um, you get well, a rocket into orbit. Yeah, so uh, next month we, we were uh, putting a satellite for Malaysia into orbit, uh, and then... Uh, From Malaysia? For, for oh, Malaysia. Oh, for Malaysia, Yes, yeah, right. so a Malaysian satellite. Um, and uh, but, but in the rocket business, uh, the rocket company does the launch. It's not like the airline business. So you don't right. sell the rocket, you sell the launch. Right. Um, and, uh, and then later this year, we'll be launching our big rocket from Cape Canaveral. Uh, that's the Falcon 9. And that's the one that's going to be servicing the space station, among other things. Yeah. Now, is there a philosophy here that somehow the private sector can do a lot more than, than it has done in, in areas that seem, because of the, because of the size, rela you know, reserved for government? Yeah, it, th definitely. The, the private sector is very good at at optimization uh, and, and innovation. I mean, the private sector is generally better at doing things than the government. Uh, I think that's 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 fair to say. Um, but uh, you know, there are certain things that 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 the government that that are suited to the government, like basic research yeah, and that right, sort of right, thing. Right. Um, but um, it, yeah, so as far as uh, SpaceX. The, the, the reason that there hasn't been a huge uh, number of 
a, a, a big improvement in, in the space industry. Uh, I, I think it's because of, of uh, it's very difficult for for shippers create a destruction right. uh, process to 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 uh, come into effect because it is such uh, a significant uh, amount of capital that's needed to start a, a rocket company and and it's a very difficult technical challenge and the number of people that that really understand rocketry in the world is, is a very small number um, so it, it's it's just it's really a huge barriers to entry um, and and that's why we haven't seen the forcing function of improvement that that there should have been over the years and your understanding came from sort of uh, from this was not what you studied in college well, I studied physics, um, but well, studying physics and studying rocket science right. is a very different thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I it gives you the physics. basics. <laughs> <laughs> gives you the basics. Good framework, good analytical framework. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but no, I picked it up along the way. Um, yeah. But well, what is your core competence? You think? You? Um, I, th I think it's uh, uh, technology. Technology, yeah, yeah, technology. Yeah. If if it, if it, if it, something has to be designed and invented. Um, and then you, and you have to figure out how to um, ensure that the the value of the of, of the thing you create is greater than the cost of the inputs. Uh, then um, that's that's probably my core skill. Now bring me to the car, and, and I drove a car this afternoon. So far, so good. Which was terrific. It's the Roadster. Yeah. Uh, where does that stand? You obviously, I've been, um, I've been in the Google parking lot. Yeah, I've okay, you've seen a few I've there. I've seen a few there. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that's true in other places in Silicon Valley. Yeah, uh, I don't know whether it's particularly a car that appeals to people in, in Silicon Valley because of interest in technology and high performance and lots of other things, or or, or what? Whether there are a lot of rich people and who are willing to spend that kind of money for for something they think is on the cutting edge of causes they believe in, sustainable energy. Right, right, right. But, but tell me about how, where you are in this development of this uh, electric car, which sure. has, most of all, this extraordinary sort of power. Yeah. You know. Yeah, zero to 60 time at 3.9 yeah, seconds. Which is, and, and, and the, the road... This is extraordinary when you think about the yeah. sports cars and anything right. else that's out on the road today. Yeah, in fact, on the Top Gear test track, our standard Roadster um, beats a Porsche GT3. Exactly, that's which is point. Not that's bad. a reference. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, the Roadster Sport will be even better. Yeah. Um, so but you've also said, in terms of where you want to go, that, that developing a high-performance sports car is not what this is about. Absolutely. This yes. is about something else, and you yes. want to develop a, a sedan. Yeah, the, the, the whole purpose behind Tesla, the reason um, I put so much of my, my time and, and money into helping create the, uh, the business is, uh, is is we want to serve as a catalyst for accelerating the electric car revolution. Um, the, uh, the the price of gas at the pump does not reflect the true cost of gasoline um, because you have a consumption of a, of, of a public good. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the most it, it's, it's really a common problem in economics. You have the same thing in in, in fishing where because there's no cost to, to fishing stocks, people just overfish and. You know, and, and you, you have disaster that that, that ensues, right. and and here we we're, we're not paying for the cost of of the CO2 concentration in the oceans and atmospheres. We're not paying for all these the ancillary effects yeah. of the wars and yeah. all the other things at, at, at the at the gas pump. So you effectively have a subsidy taking place at at the gas pump because of that. So the only way to bridge that is is with innovation, um, is to try to try to make electric cars better sooner than they would otherwise be. Now suppose this, this is a hypothetical which may or may not speak to the point, but suppose 15 years ago, right. let's say Bill Clinton as president, who talked about the road to the 21st century and all of that. Suppose he had said, I, I, I believe so much in sustainable energy that I want to make a commitment and the federal government, using all of its resources, will develop an electric car with appropriate battery power uh, that will change the face of automobile, the automobile industry in the world. Was that very doable? Now, Bill Clinton was elected in 1992, 17 well, years ago. Yeah. The, you could have made a reasonably good electric car around that time uh, for, for a lot of investment. Um, and should that have been done? Should the U.S. government have made that kind of... Otherwise, you will not be able to change the driving habits of Americans. <sighs> Was it a worthwhile expenditure at that time? I think time? it probably would have been a worthwhile expenditure, but the the, the thing that really uh, helps electric cars uh, is lithium ion. Um, right. And when did that come around? I mean, let me explain why batteries yeah. has always been the great dilemma for de developing an electric car. Sure. Well, the, the the energy contained within a battery is is so much less than 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 is contained in gasoline um, that. 
I mean, it's really almost, it's hard to qu quite describe. I mean, the, I, another way to put it is the, the Tesla battery pack in the Roadster, which is the most advanced battery pack in the world. Right. Um, the, the common reference um, is to call uh, what is actually a cell a battery. Right. So a cell is the little single can of chem right. chemicals, and then the, if you have multiple cells, that's, that's what actually a battery is. Right. That's, right. that's li right. literally right. what a battery right. means. Right. Multiple cells. The multiple cells. Right. Um, and then and, and usually as the batteries get bigger and bigger, they get harder and harder to deal with. Um, so the, the, the cell that we use is a commodity cell. Right. Um, it's you buy it anywhere. Pretty much, and, yeah. it, and it's the same sort of thing that's in, in any one of a number of laptops. Right. Um, the, the challenge is combining those cells into and having th thousands of them, making sure they're safe, making sure they, they'll last for 200,000 miles or 100,000 know, over bumps and uh, potholes and extremes of temperature and, and safe in a crash, and, and that, that compounds the problem massively. And you've got to make sure the charge is, uh, and temperature is balanced across the whole thing. So the, 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 the difficulty is really at the pack level much more than it is at the cell level. Um, and, uh, and that's really where, where te the single biggest area of Tesla's expertise. Although I should point out that Tesla also has, uh, we, we, we designed both the motor and, and the power electronics and, right. and the software that manages the whole thing. So th those are important too, but the battery is the single most important thing. And the, the Tesla battery pack, uh, to reference it to, to gasoline, uh, it weighs about 1,000 pounds, um, and it has the energy content of 2.5 gallons of gasoline. So, the, the, um, so the, the that means you've got to have a lot of charges. Well, what, what that means is that, uh, but, but there's, there's an advantage uh, that, that, that um, because the, the, the consumption of that energy is much more efficient in an electric car. And this, and this is, uh, I'll get to, you know, why, why is the Tesla Roadster twice as efficient as, as a Toyota Prius, which right. is obviously not, not a sports car. Right. Um, and uh, the, the, the reason is because an electric motor is fundamentally uh, if super efficient at turning energy into motion. Um, so a, a good electric motor uh, so, such as the one that, that we have in the Tesla Roadster, is about 90% efficient at turning the electricity into motion, uh, whereas a, a gasoline internal combustion engine is somewhere typically in the range of around 17 or 18%. Most of what it does is generate heat. Mm. Um, so, so even though it's only 2.5 gallons of gasoline, that 2.5 gallons of energy content goes really far compared with... Uh, you know, if, you had a, if, that, if, if that was... Okay, compared yeah. to the Prius, but also compared to the new GM Volt. Right. How does it do in comparison with the Volt? Well, the Volt is a different architecture. It, it uses a, it's a plug-in hybrid architecture. So it, it, it's, a, I think, got a, about a 40 mile or so battery pack. That's what they say, right? And, and then there's a, 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 an engine with a generator that allows you to go beyond the, the, the 40 miles. Exactly. Right. And um, whereas ours, ours is pure electric, um, and uh, the, the strategy that we've we've decided to to hew to is is a pure electric strategy, um, and. Uh, I mean, I've been criticized sometimes for responding to questions like yours to, to explain why, why we've gone pure electric, and then people have taken that to be an, an attack on, on, on the Volt, which is, is not the case. I, I hope the Volt succeeds, no, and I think no, it can uh, be a pretty uh, good car. Exactly. I don't take this as an attack. I'm, I'm asking no, no, questions. No, it, 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 totally. It, yeah. it's, it's, it's not, but, the, but I just wanted to, to put, put you. that, uh, yeah, you know. Right. Um, hey, what I hope to do in this conversation with you is figure out what it is you've done, because you've got a fair amount of attention. Sure. Figure out why you're not further along than you are, mm -hmm. or figure out why you are and, and what your expectations are yeah. to do, when, and where is the game for you? I think it's taken a while for the industry to come around to, the, to this point, but I think it's, it's largely, uh, at this point, it's, it's, it's almost become conventional wisdom that the future is, is electric cars. Right. The only question exactly. is this interim period of, of this transitional period. Um, but, but if you look at the pace of, of battery improvement, um, it's clear that that's why I mean it's inevitable. Right. It, it, the future will be entirely electric. And the irony of all this conversation is that, it, that in the last year, a year before its bankruptcy, General Motors had announced that the Bolt you know, was the key to their future right. as an automobile company. Right. Yeah, I I exactly. Um, I mean, w one area of criticism I think that is, that is, is valid uh, regarding uh, GM is Prius that helped them come to that conclusion, by the way. <laughs> well, they should have probably done a Prius or something like that, but I yeah. think. Um, if, if you knew they had the EV1, right, right, exactly, which didn't work, didn't work, but didn't make it for reasons I'm not clear. Right, and you know, as a marketing success. Yeah, and Chris Payne did a movie, Who Killed the Electric Car, right, about exactly, it, and, right, and it was right, sort of right. trying to investigate that issue. But um, I, I think it's it's no, it's notable that in in that uh, movie, it shows that the customers who had the EV1, the, the, the cars had to be taken away from them 
and, and crushed, <laughs> and they held a candlelit vigil. Right. If you have people that really love a product to the degree that they're willing to hold a candlelit vigil for it, that yeah. that says, hey, maybe you should make an EV too. It certainly does say that. You know.